Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for granting us this precious day of God in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful way you have led us so far. As young people of God, we have gathered in thy house that we may worship you and meet with you. Thank you for helping us so far and helping us to worship you, God, in measures this morning. To experience the power of your spirit ministering to us and helping us to minister unto you, yes, God. We thank you for those moments of worship that we could have this morning in your presence, Lord. Lord, you have called us together that we may meet with you, spend this time with you. Lord, in a world which is so complex, a world that is, Lord, running in a diffraction apart and away from God, Lord, you have placed your church in this very earth, in this very world to declare your name and your glory. And God, we thank you for those prophetic confessions we could bring unto you this morning in songs and expressions. Lord, these days have been spoken about in your word. And these are important days in your calendar. Lord, you will have a generation. Despite all that is happening upon this earth. Despite the moral deterioration, rebellion. Immorality. Yes, Lord God, in the midst of that, you will have a generation that will declare your name and your glory and will usher in your kingdom upon this earth, O God. And this is the challenge that we have before us and we have gathered together in the light of this great call that is resting upon us as your church, as a young generation. So Father, help us to hear your voice beyond words of man. So help each one of us. Lord, open our ears and cause us to hear. Open our eyes and cause us to see, to behold. Yes, O God, that's our prayer. So we commit ourselves unto thee, Lord. Let nothing distract our minds. Help us to be focused on you and help us to have ears exercised and we know you will give us that grace to hear thee. Lord, also pray for myself. Give me every grace that I need this morning to convey that burden you have laid upon my heart, O oh God. 
Yes, sir, God, help me that you would grant words and utterances that I would need this morning to convey, to share across those very thoughts of God unto each one of us. Lord, let it flow from heart to heart. Let it flow from spirit to spirit. And let there be a work born of your spirit in the midst of us. So that's our prayer, our confession this morning, Lord. It's beyond man. It has to be the work of thy spirit alone. For that which is of the spirit is spiritual. Yes, sir, God. And that's therefore our cry. Lead us and guide us. Grant me every grace, Lord. The liberty of the spirit may be my portion as I yield to thy lordship, Holy Spirit. Help us. Worship thee, bless thee, and thank thee again. In Jesus' most precious and matchless name we pray. The Lord has laid uh, a burden upon my heart. This has been over my heart for some time. And there was no way we could gather together. But then as God opened up the door for us to gather, I felt it is necessary for such a gathering. Amen. And I thank each one of you for responding to this and, and coming this morning. Um, you know, um, as we have gathered here in, in this congregation of the young people, we have a second generation where your parents have been part of this body, part of this call of God and this purpose of God, and you had the privilege of being raised up in a family like that and also in a local church like this. Then we have another set of people present here uh, who have come from different backgrounds, maybe from a different religious faith altogether, and also from Christian backgrounds with many denominational backgrounds uh, from, you know, so many different church backgrounds. Uh, so, God in his mercy has brought us into this body of believers. And over a period of time, we are listening to God's word. There are many things we are hearing. Some things are difficult and hard to understand. We being uh, young sometimes from a different backgrounds, uh, our Thought realm is filled with many other things we have heard over a period of time. And there are conflicts in our minds. And sometimes we wonder, what is the truth? You know, and in a gathering like this, it's not possible for me to share everything with us. But regardless of our backgrounds, we are here this morning. And as the Lord leads perhaps towards the afternoon when we would have a time of interaction, some of these things I could bring about and explain and share with us. Uh, but one thing that I would like to uh, share this morning is, you know, God's need for a young generation, regardless of whether you are part of the second generation 
or you are from other backgrounds brought in by the sovereign hand of God and part of this local church together with God's people as a young life you know uh, how important is a young generation unto God in this present time so I would like to say that God needs today a young generation a young generation that is God's need so I would like to uh, bring our thoughts around this need of God for a young generation and in the light of that I would like to uh, bring uh, a scripture portion um, you know and I would like to turn us to the book of Judges uh, and we know that where I am going to is a very familiar young man called Gideon and uh, but be open I am not getting into uh, in the light of what we heard in the past but something different so uh, please turn with me to the book of Judges and uh, chapter 6 I am reading 14 to 16 right and the Lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have not I sent thee and he said unto him O my Lord wherewith shall I save Israel behold my family is poor in Manasseh and I am least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Now we have heard many messages from the life of Gideon. Gideon lived in a time when so much in Israel was contrary to the honor and the glory of God's name. You know, so I would like to bring the similarity of times first of all. As I said, God's need today is a young generation. So Gideon lived at a time when so much in Israel was contrary to the honor and the glory of God and his name. You know, the Israelites and God's people, they were at mercy of their enemies. And they were a defeated people. They were pitifully poor, having no enjoyment of any kind in the land that they lived, which is God's promised land. Remember that. They were living in the promised land in the Canaan land. Which had been the land of promise. Where Joshua and Caleb brought them in. A land that is to be flowing with milk and honey. They were in utter confusion as a nation and as his people with no unity among themselves, no cohesion among themselves, no leaders who could speak with the authority, the word of God. You know, they were devoid of all this. And only leaders with an authority from God could speak a word of finality which flows from God alone that could bring hope and confidence to God's people. So this was the condition and we know that 
it is very similar to our times in which we are living. Things are contrary to the honor and the glory of God's name as we look around. Now in his sovereignty, this is what I would like to bring in. In the sovereignty of God, in the midst of all that was happening, God reacted. And, and he wanted to recover such conditions as would honor his name. Honor his name among the people. And it was for this purpose, God in his sovereignty apprehended the life of Gideon. So here we find the indication that God wants to go on with his purpose. Despite what was happening, regardless of the conditions of God's people, in choosing Gideon and calling and separating this life, God wants to make sure that he wants to go on with his purpose. Amen? God wants to go on despite what's happening. In spite of much failure, in spite of what the enemy has been doing against God's people, you know, we see the move of God, the deliberation of God. that he chose to bring in this young man. In other words, I want to say, my young brothers and sisters, regardless of what's happening, despite the situations, amen, both in the world and in the church realm, I want to say to you today, prophetically speaking, that God wants to move on with his purpose. And he wants to lay hold of you as a young generation. You know, and we need to understand that the older generation must give way for the younger generation to move on with the purpose of God. What is our salvation? What is the renewing of our youth? You know, we have to be open to the Holy Spirit to do that renewing work in our lives. I know that Many a time young people meet with discouragements in their life. I know that when I came into the ministry full time, there are many things I heard, very discouraging words. You know, that he is so young yes that's a reality but that is something that everyone has to overcome in one's life when God gives some responsibility when you are young there are those who may despise and so Paul had to say 
to Timothy, let no one despise your youth. Amen. You know, so we see that there could be. But the reality is, we are getting over that. You know, and I realize in my own life that I was very young. And yet, you know, the grace of God comes to us when we are young, when we are available to God, you know, and God will help us that we are able to overcome uh, of that nature of our youth. God who has called us will also give us the grace necessary. So we need to realize one thing that after all, it's not the years that govern the matter. It's not the age that governs the matter. Age is not the criterion. I want to encourage you. The criterion is spirituality. Yes, Paul had to give the responsibility to Timothy because there was no one else. And so he said, let no man despise your youth. Be an example. The youth could have its immaturity. The youth could have its, uh, you know, uh, 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 when we look at the life of Timothy, we know that he was a little shy kind of person. You know, but these are things we overcome. And I want to encourage you from my own life. When this responsibility was, you know, given to me, I was only 31. You know, and, and so there are so many remarks one will, may have to face. But the reality is, age is not the criterion, but spirituality. And I would like to bring in an example here. What is true in nature is also true in realms and things of the spiritual. As we all know, as soon as any organism in the nature or in the natural uh, or the world or in the nature out there ceases to reproduce, anything in the nature ceases to reproduce, death has already commenced in it. So the law of nature is ever fresh reproduction. So the law of life is reproduction. God created things upon this earth. And we know that God does not create a second time. Amen. Amen. God created things. Let there be and they were. But he did, does not all the time say let there be. He created once and they have been given over to the law of life of reproduction. So he doesn't recreate a second time. So he proceeds, he moves on by the law of reproduction. Now let me bring that to us and to our midst today morning. Every new generation is meant by God to bring past values into new freshness.
Every new generation, every young generation is to bring the past values, the values of the past generation into freshness. Amen? It's a responsibility of the young generation. No new generation is a new created humanity. Amen? So we here, I want to share with us the great responsibility on the young generation. And also the responsibility on the older generation. To pass it on to a young generation. The great need for the older generation to pass it on to a young generation. And a young generation to bring it into all freshness. So, a new generation is not newly created humanity, but is a generation that has grown up. As we see, a young generation that grew up with Joshua and Caleb. You know, so it is uh, not a newly created humanity, but a young generation that brings that, you know, that truth or the things of the past into all freshness and perpetuates that purpose of God upon this earth. And therefore, I would like to say here, here is a young generation. And some of us are a passing generation. And our freshness and fruitfulness will be found in helpfully making way for a new young generation. So I would like to say here, this is our burden. You know, the things that God has helped us to see, receive, and stand for in whatever measure, is now to be passed over to you. God is in need of a young generation. As we heard as our brother exhorted this morning, it's not a matter of coming and going. It's not a matter of marking our attendance. God has brought you into this body. And you are to be a living member of the body of Christ. There's a great need for you to understand this. It's not a matter of full-time ministry, but what I'm sharing with is God's need for a young generation who will be able to take on the freshness and fruitfulness from the older generation and take it on or perpetuate that upon this earth. So the Lord's glory and honor are expressed in perpetual youth as young people will take it on from one generation and take it on to another generation. But let me tell you one important thing here. But the new young generation cannot succeed just because of youth. 
Just because we are young people would not mean that we can take on things. That's a wrong understanding. Many a time, young people could have this feeling. We are young, we can do, and we will do. But remember, the young new generation cannot succeed just because of youth. Just because of youth. One could be officially appointed to do something. And he may do something. But it's just a mere official thing. So there can be no succeeding in this realm because of being merely a youth. Succession comes in an inward way. It doesn't come to us because we are young. Because we are energetic. Because we have long years ahead of us. Succession doesn't come that way. Merely because we are young, we have years before us, and we have this, we have that. It doesn't come that way. It does not come because we are young. But it comes in an inward way. And what that means is that it comes by spirituality. This was the test applied in the life of Gideon. God applied these principles upon Gideon. You know, we see how the divine sovereignty of God came upon Gideon. It is the sovereign hand of God, undoubtedly, that he acts in a sovereign way. Though he is a sovereign God and works in a sovereign way, he does look for certain conditions. Remember that. He doesn't just pick up anybody. He is sovereign. In his calling, his choice, in his workings. And yet he does look for certain conditions. He goes by certain principles. Which will bring that sovereign Sovereignty into perfection or operation. So I would like to look at Gideon's life to share a few things about how we as young people would meet God's need in this present time. So, you know, as I said, God needs a young generation. And God's sovereign hand is coming upon this young generation. But it's not just because we are young. Amen? But there are certain things that God looks for. Merely because we are young, we cannot. God looks for spirituality. You know, the first thing about Gideon is his humility. That expression was shared before us. You know, the humility of Gideon is very evident in these verses that we read. You know, humility is the prime mark of spirituality. We need to really understand this. We are young, but when we are young, sometimes we can be proud. 
we can be proud of many things. Our health, our wealth, our education, and uh, our, you know, our physical body and many other things. You know, but we remember that God is looking for a young generation. God is in need of a young generation. A generation that will bring in the freshness of those things which an older generation had, you know, brought forth so far and take it on. Perpetuate those things. But humility is the prime mark of spirituality. You know, it says here in verse 14, And the Lord looked upon him. And the Lord looked upon Gideon. You know, Gideon was a man without any pride. Far from thinking highly of himself, he clearly stated himself to be very low. Look at his words here. And he said, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. You know, so we, here we can see the mark of humility. Mark of humility. That's the prime mark of spirituality. He had no pride of his family. Being ready to confess it to everyone. You know, and we know that as we read the verses later on that his father was someone. And he had built an altar of Baal and people in the cities to come and worship Baal there. And also we see that he was able to select some men from his father's house. You know, and we see in verse 28, we read like this. You know, and when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down and the grove was cut down. So the men of the city used to come there and worship Baal. And yet he says, I'm the least. My family is poor. The truth seems to be that Gideon was a man of a humble spirit. He was not proud of being young. And I would like to say one thing to all of us. Nobody is going to be used by God just for the reason of being young. And we are able. That's very evident from the life of Gideon. You know, he never harbored any superiority in his heart. He put himself in a low state. So I would like to say this very clearly to all my young brothers and sisters. Humility is the mark. 
if God is ever to help us as a young generation to perpetuate the purpose of God upon this earth. If we seek true humility, then we may become an instrument in the hands of God. So I would like to share this with all my heart to every one of us. As the scripture says, God resisted the proud. The very story of Gideon is a clear declaration that any instrument that God would use cannot have a glory of its own. God found in Gideon a humble spirit at the beginning and he subsequently took pains to reduce Gideon further. Remember that. Bring him even lower For lowliness is the ground of the presence and the power of God. So I want to tell all my young brothers and sisters, when we are young, we can be proud, we can be arrogant, we can be rash. You know, we see all that in the world today. God's eyes are upon you. And God is in need of a generation. So let us realize that being young is a great advantage. God needs them to perpetuate His glory, His purpose on the earth. Receive from the older generation those things in all freshness and take it on. But it cannot come to us because we are young. It can only come to us by spirituality. Humility is the mark, therefore. Please understand. It's only when personal ambitions and hidden desires and when personal glory is set aside, the Lord can say to, the Lord could say to Gideon, the Lord is with thee. The Lord said, I am with thee. In verse 12 we read, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. The Lord said in verse 15, verse 16, Surely I will be with thee. So I would like to say this again. As young people, as young generation, may God help us to walk the way of humility. Then God will come around and say, I am with thee. I am with thee. This is the kind of men and women that God is looking for today. A Moses, when God called him, his reaction was, Who am I 
that I should go, O oh my Lord. I am not eloquent. A man who was trained in all the wisdom of Egypt, the greatest university of the earth in those times. But he says, I am not eloquent. But I am of slow speech and of a slow tongue. When God called Jeremiah, he argued with God and said, Oh Lord, my, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. You know, so we see, but God in his mercy chose these men. And the mark was humility. He had to go away from Egypt. He chose to suffer with God's people. And the wilderness God began to break this man. And here was Moses. Brought lower and lower and lower and lower. You know, I want to encourage therefore. We see the great man of God, Elijah. How discouraged he was at one point of time. He could see his own inadequacies. He was so strong and yet he saw his inadequacies. And in that discouragement God came to him. There was an earthquake, there was a wind, there was fire. But in all that God did not speak but there was a still small voice. You know, we can see here, God's instrument is always conscious of his own personal inadequacies. And even so was Gideon. So, as I said, first thing is, as young people, as a young generation, you know, we need to be a people of humility. And I want to tell you, the word of God says, and the Lord looked upon Gideon or him. The second thing I want to place before us is diligence. Diligence. You know, when we look into the life of Gideon, his willingness to work, and how diligent was he was in what he was doing. We read here in verse 11. And there was an angel of the Lord. And sat under an oak which was in Ophrah. That pertained unto Joash the Abizarite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide from the Midianites. So he was threshing corn in the winepress. You know, so here we see him doing our work. He did his work in a most unlikely and unsuitable place. He is supposed to do it in an open place, but he had not an open place, but he did it so to hide from the Midianites. So here we find, despite the 
negative situations, he was willing to do something which was necessary to be done. He did his work. He didn't say it's very difficult. Circumstances do not allow me. You know, brother, you do not, do not know my background. You do not know my situation. You do not know the pressures that I have. You know, I am surrounded by the Midianites. My father is like this. My family background is like this. I am from a poor background. But we can see one thing in is the diligence of this young man called Gideon. How diligent he was. He was working in a most unsuitable place for the work which he was doing. But he did it. The days were so evil. Very little seemed possible. And indeed most of the people fled away and hid themselves from the Midianites. And as we read here, verse 4, about the Midianites, And they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou came to unto Gaza, and left no substance, sustenance, sorry, left no sustenance for Israel. Neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents. And they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number. And they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished. Because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. So here we see the background. But that did not stop Gideon. He was diligent in that little thing that he could do. Most of the people had ran away and hid themselves in caves and holes. Because of the ever present enemies. It looked like as though nothing positive could be done in a situation like that. And therefore the tendency was to despair of action. And accept the situation as it is. Now it's not possible. What can we do? So let's just leave it. Nothing can be done. You know how often we are found in a place like this. There's no diligence. There's no heart. But we can see in the life of Gideon, there was a heart in him. Regardless of the negative situations, he said, let me do the little I can. You know, he was threshing corn in a wine press. While people had nothing to eat. Amen. He was threshing wheat. At least something for God's people to eat. He too could have accepted the situation of defeat. But Gideon had a different attitude. That's what I want to convey to my young generation. My brothers and sisters. Don't take this present defeated condition of the church realm. Do not accept this present spiritual condition prevailing in the church realm. And say, what can we do? Everything is like this. Everything is like that. This is where God is looking for a young generation. Be diligent. He had a different attitude.
It may look like that much cannot be done. But there was little that could be done. And he determined to keep himself occupied with what little was possible. Hallelujah. You know, many a time we look for great things to be done for God. You know, if we all can do that little, if we all can be available to God for that little, And he considered their impossible situation and in the midst of that he saw something. He felt there could be a small contribution. There could be a hidden contribution. That he could do for the preservation of God's people. When they were impoverished. They were starving in other words. He said that little. He did not say that oh I don't have so much. But that little grain I have, I will get it ready and preserve some lives. And I want to tell you, the Lord took note of that heart. The Lord was standing right by that wine press and watching Gideon's effort. Perhaps that was the reason the Lord said, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And I want to share this with all my heart. You know, God watches. I'm not a great man. But I know I can share many things from my own a little experiences in my early days. When you are honest with God with your time, I was not in full time ministry, but there was something within my heart after I knew God. I knew salvation. I didn't have all the light which you have today as young people. I didn't have it. I only knew that salvation is for all. And so I wanted to bring everyone to salvation. But I want to tell you one thing. God watches your heart. It's not that you're perfect. It's not that you are a great overcomer. But I want to tell you, as young people, don't be bogged down by many things, but have a heart for God. Could you be diligent in your heart? How small it is, you're concerned about God. And here was Gideon. The little I can do to save some lives, to cause some, some to survive and not die. Diligent. I want to tell you one thing. God looked, he was standing by the wine press. He looked upon him. The Lord is with thee, almighty man of valor. And I would like to say here, 
the Lord is certainly not with a slothful person. God is never with a slothful person. You know why? For God, diligence is an essential quality. And therefore, God cannot go on with someone who is slothful. God will be willing to change somebody from that state. But he cannot go on with somebody who wants to remain slothful. You know, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verse 11, we read like this, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Now, this is the quality. Fervent in the spirit. I'm not turning to other translations for want of time. Not slothful. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You know, God cannot go on with a slothful person. He requires diligence as an essential quality. You know, and this describes, this verse describes the kind of man God looks for. And in the person of Gideon, God found a man with such diligence. You know, so we see that Gideon's activities were very limited. He did it in a very crammed place, in a hidden place. But remember, he was doing all that he could do, even it seemed to be so little. Sometimes we want to do something big for God. God is not looking for that. The little, the hidden, everybody wants to do in the open. Diligence would not look for platforms. Diligence will not look for open arena. Diligence will look for where the need is. A heart is always available to do things. So that's what we see in the life of Gideon. Diligence. And the Lord took note of Gideon's heart. You know, so I would like to bring one thing here. For God, even a gesture is enough. You know the gestures in our lives? God sees our gestures. For God, sometimes even a small gesture is enough. He looks at those who would enter into a place and look for straight for a chair that is far easier for them to sit. Maybe an easy chair. Or look out for a chair that would be, you know, a sofa set. You know, look for, I'm not talking about this hall here, I'm talking about in general. You know, look for something more comfortable. You know, God sees those who look out for excuses. You know, remember this, gestures God watches. Here was a small gesture of Gideon 
behind the wine press, hiding from the Midianites, he was threshing wheat to help some people that they do not starve to death, to help them to survive. You know, so here we find the gesture of Gideon, which God looked upon. You know, God will not be happy with those who look for excuses. He cannot go along with them. And people who are glad to skirt around and evade responsibilities. Some responsibility that may confront them. Then God cannot look on them as he looked upon Gideon. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters. God's word is coming to us not to condemn us. Amen? If we have not been diligent, God wants us to be diligent. Amen? Amen? God is not condemning anyone today. You know, but remember, God does not look for those who are slothful. I used to share in the classes here for the young brothers, our H2 brothers. The Lord never called anybody slothful, lazy to be his apostles. Peter and company had labored the whole night and caught not one single fish. Whole night. And they were about to go, washing their nets. Here comes Jesus, give me. Give me your boat. And then he says, push this boat a little away from the shore. But they were willing. Despite the whole night labor and discouragement that not one single fish they could. What will they feed their families? Total loss, not a single penny back home. And about to leave, this man is coming and saying, give me your boat. And they could have reacted in a very bad way. But they obeyed. They obeyed. And you know the story, they became the apostles. Matthew was working at the office, in the tax office. Follow me. Paul, the, the apostle Paul said, God counted me faithful to call me into this ministry. You know, God, God is not looking for Lazy people, slothful ones, fervent in the spirit. So this is an important mark for a young generation in, in this hour. As I said, being young is not the qualification, but spirituality. Spirituality. Humility, diligence, our gestures, brothers and sisters, today from today, let there be a deliverance in our lives. Amen? Amen? And a change. Our gestures, they do matter to God. Yes. Are we looking for excuses? Are you wanting to skirt around and evade some responsibility and challenge that may confront us? Then the Lord will look for someone else. But God did look upon Gideon. You know, in other translation, the margin says, the Lord turned toward him. 
what a what a tremendous thing to see in your own life the lord turning you towards you what will cause the lord to turn towards you as an individual would be our gestures our diligence towards god you know again when you look at you know judges chapter 7 how he made a declaration and how people were brought 32000 to 22000 and then again the people were reduced and uh, reduced to 3 300 people and we see again here God's decision and choice was based upon a gesture again. Okay. Amen. A gesture again. Now this is important. Our attitude and how we do things it matters to God. So the Lord said, and the number of them that lapped were 6. putting their hand to their mouth were 300 men but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water and the lord said unto gideon by the 300 men that lapped with lap will i save you and deliver the midianites into thine hand let all the other people go every man unto his place you know again here we see the gesture God's decision and choice was based upon a a kind of gesture which revealed their heart condition where the divine interests were made known how attached they were to their own personal ways so our dispositions are very important our gestures are very important our behavior even small matters are important we can reveal our dispositions by our simple actions in life you know even so in our daily life remember the eye of the lord is upon us He knows how easily we jump up and grab things which give us a great you know gratification for self and when things of the lord comes we just dump it there is no jumping around there is no joy you know these gestures in your day to day life is also important when it comes to the things of god we shrink back you know when it comes to some of our you know personal thing whether it's studies or preparations do not misunderstand me we give hours and hours and hours but when it comes to a bible study a gathering look at our gestures i mean it's not before the elders it's not before others the lord who looked upon gideon is watching you amen you know in our day to day life we grab we are so happy 
But when it comes to the things of God, that jabbing and the grabbing is not there. Our gestures, we shrink when it comes to hard work where God is concerned. Remember this, brothers and sisters. Our gestures in our everyday life, very important. Our elders may not see it. Our parents may not see it. But God sees. And you know, many a time, we are victims of our own gestures. We do not realize and we are unhappy with God. We are unhappy with the elders. We are unhappy with the parents. We can be unhappy with even others. Please. None of us will ever be used by the Lord in any vital way unless our hearts are wholly set on him and his interests. It's not perfection, but a heart. A heart, not a heart that feels superior to others, but a heart that is diligent toward God. You know, this is very important, and we read in Proverbs a verse which goes very much along with this verse, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Hallelujah. See as thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. And I want to say to all my young brothers and sisters. Let this be a day that God's hand will come upon us. You know, and we'll experience the powerful hand of God. Bringing that great change and deliverance in us. That we would be a generation that will in all freshness take on this great call of God to your generation around. The other thing, quality we find in Gideon and God is looking for you know, in the midst of God's people and this generation is, we see that Gideon was concerned for others. He's concerned for others. As we already seen in the past or in our meditation now, Gideon was concerned for others. He looked and saw the people were starving and that enemy was seeking to steal away the little food that they had. So he did his best to help an undernourished and weakened people who could not lift a hand for their own deliverance. You know, as we read in the book of Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, In verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Not to be always concerned about ourselves. Not looking each one to his own things, but each of you the things of others. 
So Gideon was not one of those persons who are always preoccupied with their own condition. You know, many a time I see this. We are so preoccupied with our own condition. No time for others. So concerned about our own conditions and therefore filled with self-pity, self-condemnation and complaints. Complaints about my condition, complaints about others. Because they didn't do this, they didn't understand, they didn't say this or that. Whatever that is. They're always in that sorry situation. You know, Gideon was not like that. What to do? My father is one who has made this uh, altar for Baal here and the whole town is coming to worship here and what can I ever do for God? He was not looking to himself, his conditions, his situations, but his heart was something I can for God's people, something I can for the house of God, something to encourage others. I may be going through struggles and challenges, but I want to be an encouragement to my brothers and my sisters. Amen? Amen. It's not my sickness. It's not my bodily affliction. It's not my financial situation. It is not the background of my family. I want to be given to encourage my brothers and sisters. That was the concern of Gideon. Oh, may God deliver us from self-pity, self-condemnation, so much involved about ourselves, my future, what will happen? I want to tell you, the more you are caught up, the more you are, you know, binding yourself. Be released today. Be released today. Let your thoughts be upon God, God's house, God's people encouraging others. I tell you, that is the ground that you will begin to see great victories for yourself. Yes, you're not perfect. You're weak. There are difficulties. So what? Are you going, waiting to be to be perfect so that you can encourage somebody that day will never come thousands will perish around you and finally you yourself will perish we have a lot of wrong notions within us please please understand this Gideon was concerned about others he wanted to do what little he can in order to help the people of God. He was concerned about the troubles of others and their starvation, their need, and was ready to pray and act on their behalf. I want to ask you, how many of us share the prayer needs of others? You know, these are areas, you know, many a time we lack. Concern for others is to be seen in our prayer for others. And where we can act on their behalf as well. That activity of Gideon down in the wine press 
you know, tells very clearly a secret concern for God's people and God's name. And to resist the enemy in a small way. In a small way. He was resisting the enemy who was trying to impoverish God's people. Causing them to starve and go weaker that they have no strength to fight against the enemy. But here was the young man doing the little. The little. He was concerned. His great concern was not about himself, but about the fact that, you know, see verse 13, you know, chapter 6 and verse 13. You know, look at his questions here. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So here he had questions. He was remembering the former activities of God in the midst of God's people. The, the workings of God in, among God's people. And those things were no longer seen. He was concerned about. He was not happy with slimy theological answers that could, he could get from others. You know, what to do. Things are very bad. It's because of this. It's because of that. You know, there are so many who can give us, you know, such slimy answers. You know, and he was not satisfied with those things. He said, where is the evidence of God? That God who worked, where is he today? You know, he was crushing. He was being crushed, in other words, at the wine press. It's a picture, shadow of what he was going through. He was being crushed within himself. He was in a spiritual travail over the needs of God's people and their defeat and I would like to say one thing here whether a man is young or a woman is young or old a person can only be useful to God if he bears this kind of heart concern for God's people you know remember one thing no one is going to serve God and be of any use to him if we honor the Lord only in doctrine. That is of no use. By clever interpretations or mystical projections of the spiritual truth from the word of God, you know, he can, he can waste his years in the name of the Lord. God is looking for those men who will be concerned about God's people, God's testimony among God's people. So the Lord is watching and waiting for a young generation where their hearts are burdened as Gideon's heart was burdened. Burdened with an inward suffering. You know, that's what I want to share also with my young brothers and sisters today. You're hearing God's word. 
What's happening inside of you? I remember the early days, you know, when I knew the truth about salvation, I wanted everyone to be saved. So whether it is the bus or the train or wherever I went, I've always wanted. You know, when God opened my eyes about the purpose of my salvation, you know, there are many portions of the scriptures that brought me to a place of great brokenness and uh, changes within my being. You know, I, and I want to encourage my young brothers and sisters. You know, as I said, we are, you know, growing in age. You know, we have served our generation. And you have the great responsibility to serve your generation. And merely being youth would not help us. That's what God is conveying today to all of us. I'm not saying that you are all to come into full-time ministry. I'm not saying that. But this is our calling as his church. This is our calling to serve him. As members of the local church. This is your responsibility. Burdened with that inward suffering. Over the unhappy state of the church. You know, and I know that it cannot come by a message I share today. But if you are open to God, God can challenge things within your own life. And there could be a beginning right here in your very life. Lastly, I want to share that in the life of Gideon, there was no complicity with the enemy, no collusion with the enemy, no compromise with the enemy. You know, in verse 25, we read, And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father had, and cut down the grove that is by it. And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock, on the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou hast cut down. And then it says, Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was, because he feared his father's household, and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. You know, here we can see, there was no collusion with the enemy in the life of Gideon. No compromise. You know, there can be no kind of compromise and collusion with the powers of darkness, the enemy in our lives. Now, in our case, it's not like Gideon. May not be case with the father's house but the problem is with our own hearts there seem to be always something inside us which is in alliance with the kingdom of darkness 
You know, there is always a false altar in our lives. A false altar. Which has to be overthrown. An altar that is raised up by the self. In allegiance to some desire. Which further is linked to the powers of darkness. Because it's come from the self. From the soul man. And there are such altars in our lives which had to be broken down. Which will have to be overthrown to make way for God's altar. Before Gideon could go out and save Israel, recovering them from the hands of the enemy and recovering the honor that is due unto the name of the Lord, something had to be dealt with in the background of his own life. And so remember, God will do this even in our lives. In the background of his life, you know, there was an altar of his, that the Father has said in our lives, we have allowed altars to come up. And they have to be demolished. And another altar has to be raised up there. You know, so there are altars in our lives which God will point towards us. And the reality is that he did it. It's a reality that he did it fearfully. For he was a man without self-confidence. And he did it at night, as we read here. Nonetheless, night or day, he did it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? That's important. Whether you are fearful, you have no confidence, the question is that, are you concerned about it? God has spoken. God has revealed. God has made known. I cannot let it go on. This altar must be brought down. Amen? It must be brought down. Is that your concern? He was fearful. He had no confidence. He did it by night. He took the help. But the, nonetheless, the reality, the, the wonderful thing about Gideon was he did it. Amen? He did it. Is there a heart in us? Are we in complicity with the enemy or in collusion with the enemy? Or are we willing? You know, and we see here the wonderful thing about Gideon, as I'm going to close, is here we see and, the, and built an altar unto the Lord thy God. And build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock. So here we find an altar and the name of the Lord. You know, and we see that after he built this altar, You know, we can see that his relationship with the Lord came into a, a greater bonding. A greater harmony between God and himself. And I want to tell you this morning, my young brothers and sisters, and to all of us, including myself, 
where there is an altar for the Lord's name, there he finds a full satisfaction. For there the glory of God is secure. And God is glorified. So we see here very clearly that he raised up that altar. There is no more uncertainty. And the great victory was certain as the relationship began to be stronger and stronger day by day. So I'm going to conclude here today morning. You know, the real battle is in our hearts. And it is here God is wanting to bring great changes in these days. God wants to subdue the things of the natural man Silence that flesh by the mighty power of the cross. You know, so as we heard right at the beginning, God is in need of a young generation. God's work has to go on. So being young is not enough. Young, energetic, many years before me, God can use me. It's not that ground that God could use. But it's spirituality. So we saw certain marks from the life of Gideon. And as, as said right at the beginning, every new generation is meant by God to bring past values into new freshness. No new generation is a new created humanity, but a generation of fresh humanity which perpetuates the good which God has done before in another generation. So, as I said, we are a passing generation and our freshness and fruitfulness will be found helpfully making a way for you as a young generation. So the challenge is before you. And as we saw from the life of Gideon, God wants us to be people of humility, diligence, concern for others, no collusion with self or the enemy in any way. You know, so I conclude here today. There's so much in all that I share, much more to share from what I shared. But I, I request all of you to be open to God as we spend some time in the presence of God. Shall we all rise up in the presence of the Lord? And look to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. And let it be a time when God can really, you know, look into our hearts, our gestures. May God forgive us. Where we lacked humility, may God forgive us. There are many other things God spoke to us. And I want to, God's need is a generation whose concern will be the Lord. 
and his need and the need of God in the midst of God's people. Let's look unto the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. All that you heard today morning. Those things the Holy Spirit has spoken and underlined. Let's just bring our very lives before the Lord. God is in need of a young generation. Thank you, Lord. Where is your heart? Gideon's heart was upon God's name and his testimony, his people. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's really look to the Lord in prayer, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's respond to his voice today morning. Thank you, Jesus. God has brought you into this local church. God has brought you into this company of saints with that great purpose upon his heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's bring our hearts before God and let us make our expressions unto Him. Thank you, Jesus. Let this be a day of deliverance. Deliverance from ourselves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are we here to make use of God? Are we here that God may use us? Hallelujah, Lord. Majority want to make use of God. Rather than God use them for his own purpose and need. Generation arise. O oh, generation of God, arise and answer to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let all of us pray in our hearts, commune with God in our hearts. And say, Lord, I do not want my life to continue the way it is. I do not want my life to continue the way it is, Lord. I realize my call, why you have brought me into this body and placed me in this place, O oh God. You have helped me to hear your word all these years, all this time, O oh God. I've been so caught up with myself, my problems, my issues, my need. Self-pity, my issues, Lord, so many things. 
My gestures have been wrong, Lord. I want to be delivered from it. Lord, I come to you. I see the great responsibility upon me as part of this young generation. Lord, living in the midst of an untoward generation. Yes, your God. Your expectation over my life. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Change me, O oh God. Transform my life. Shall we all pray together unto the Lord? Let's be conscious of God as we confess. Let's be conscious of His word that God has sent to us in great burden today. Oh God, change me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord, from my ways. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh God, oh God. Let me be alive to you, Lord Jesus. Let me be alive to your need, oh God, in this generation. Everything else is death, oh Lord, as we heard. Nothing I can take from this world for which I labor so much. In one day it's all over. In one day it's all left behind, O oh God. Whether they're titles and degrees and positions and designations and wealth and riches, O oh God. It's all left behind. O Ramakaya Sakatala Ramaka. O Ramakaya Sakatala Ramaka. Hallelujah. Lord, here is my life. This feeble life. This pitiful life. Lord, there's nothing for me to offer. But can I offer this life to live for you? Lord, I'm willing to bring down those altars. And in that place, build an altar for your name, Lord. Lord, like Gideon of old... I have no capacity in myself. But with some help of God. From your people. From your house. Whether by night or day. This way or that way. Lord I will bring it down Lord. And I will raise up that altar. Hallelujah. Will that be your decision today? Will be that your decision today Lord? There is no collusion with the powers of darkness, the enemies anymore, even with the self. Lord, I am willing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If it's anyone who would like to make any expression before God. Feel free to do that. You do not do it for any man's sake. But a gesture before God. Hallelujah.